everybody and welcome back to the show. This summer has been very ridiculously crazy, so I'm sorry I haven't been posting as many videos as usual. But my wife and I, uh, we did move to another city. I quit my job and I got a new job teaching percussion ensemble and computer music, which is really awesome. Very stoked to get started. But as a result, we've been shifting around our stuff and I just got my marimba put together today for like I haven't played in at least a month, which is kind of unfortunate. But that's the way it goes. Okay, now continuing in our series on the Stevens grip, we're gonna first start out talking about the single independent stroke, that is moving one mallet at a time. And I start beginners out using the single independent stroke instead of the double vertical stroke, primarily because beginners don't have the finger strength necessary to hold on to the mallets in a loose but secure fashion. What ends up happening is if beginners try to dive into the double vertical stroke too soon, their, their fingers get tired really fast and they start clenching and clenching and clenching. And then the next thing you know, they just get used to gripping the mallets really hard and they may get tendon problems and their fingers hurt really bad and they're like, screw it, I can't do this grip, and then they quit. But if you start out with a single independent stroke, it strengthens up these fingers and it strengthens up the other three fingers. So when you go to do another kind of stroke, that their fingers are, are much stronger. They're, they're able to do it with a lot more relaxation. So that's the first thing that we're gonna talk about today. So when beginners are first trying out the single independent stroke, they run into this problem. They think that they can just rotate their hand like this and it'll work. However, when they actually try to do that, the mallet, the mounts go in opposite directions. One goes up and the other goes down if you use a strictly rotational stroke. And that presents a big issue because then the other mallet that's not supposed to be moving starts hitting keys and it starts wearing out the muscles in the hands and that's a big deal. Now some beginners figure out, okay, wait, this is a torque motion. So if I stick this mallet in line with my arm, then I can pretty much freely rotate the other one. And you can do it the other way around. You can move this one in line with your arm and then rotate. And the other, you can't really see it in the camera, but the other one's moving and the inner one's not. And that's okay when you're first starting out, but you're not always gonna be able to position that one so it's in line with your arm and then position that one so it's in line with your arm. So you can do this strict rotational kind of motion. You're gonna to have to learn how to do the actual motion. Okay, so here's what's going on. When you strictly rotate this way, both mallets are gonna move, unless you position one so that it's in line with your arm. But in general, both mallets are gonna move, and you don't want that. You want one to stay stationary while the other's moving. So here's the trick. You don't just rotate your arm left and right. It's a combination of this kind of twisting and bending your wrist this way. And when you combine those two motions at the same time, it looks something more like this. Instead of this, it looks like this. Now for the outer mallet, it's very similar. Instead of rotating this way, it's a combination of that movement and this movement to get this movement. And if you do that, you can move one mallet while the other one remains stationary. Now this does take a good deal of work, but then again, what's worth having that doesn't take a good deal of work? So when you're starting out, just maybe play them on your leg for a while or play them on a table or a bed or a pillow and just try to get that combination movement down. Where you not only rotate this way, but also this way, and you get this kind of motion. And in the outside mallet, that kind of motion. So practice on anything and just go very, very, very slow to try to understand what's going on. Now one thing I hear people say is, oh, well just hold one mallet and move the other mallet and that will train you to do it the right way. And I've actually found that it really doesn't because if you grab this mallet and rotate the other one, you can kind of use any technique you want and it's going to work. But then when you let go, it's going to go back to wiggling around a bunch. So I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend just going very, very slow and making sure you have this combination rotation movement down before taking it to the instrument. When you're first starting out taking it to the marimba, the best thing to do is just do the Stevens exercises, which is just repetitively doing notes on one mallet and then the other. And it starts at an interval of a fifth, it goes to the third, and then it goes to the octave. Now, a lot of people skip the octave, but don't do that. If you do your single independent strokes with a proper octave like we talked about last time, with the mallet underneath the middle finger. If you practice your single independent strokes with that octave, 
that when you go to switch your interval out there later, your hands will know where to go. They will know what that feels like. So don't skip the octave too. It's kind of a whole different thing as far as the independent stroke is and you need to kind of get used to what it looks like. So a simple Stevens exercise would look like this. Now when you get really comfortable with that, the next thing you should do is move on to doing scales with your inner mallets. Any exercise will do, anything you would do with two mallets, try it with the inner mallets while holding four. Now when I was back in drum corps, I could rip out those things at probably close to 160 beats per minute, which is pretty fast, but realistically speaking, unless you're in drum corps, unless you're a marching band, you're not going to be ripping these super fast scales with your inner mallets. Most of the time, you're going to be playing a line with just one mallet. So to practice that, we're going to do an exercise from the book Up Front by Jim Casella and Jim Ancona. And what we're going to do is the same exercise I just played, but we're going to do it all in one hand using one mallet. And then we're going to play some simple chord patterns in the other hand. And then we're going to switch to make sure that all the mallets get played. Here's what it looks like. Now, if you get tired of doing that and you've done it in all keys successfully and you are a champ, I have written a little piece based on In the Hall of the Mountain King from the Peer Gint Suite. And the reason why I wrote this is because I've listened to the Social Network soundtrack and it's, it's really awesome. Trent Reznor is the man. And in it, he arranges In the Hall of the Mountain King for electronic instruments and it sounds really cool. So I was like, okay, since this is in my head anyway, I may as well just make an exercise for it. And this exercise, while it's not super complicated and I, I don't do the entire song, this is pretty much just the melody, but it presents real world application to when you would play a melody with one hand and even one mallet while shaping a phrase. So here it is, In the Hall of the Mountain King.
right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to put some of the PDFs online and you can download them there. We'll see you next time.